Hi, I'm Kamala Beck, and on behalf of the worship team here at First Congregational Church in Bakersfield, California, I want to thank you for joining us today for our online worship, whether this is your first visit or you're a returning viewer. Now, as we say here at First Congregational Church, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. But some people might want to know what that means. Well, we believe that Christ taught us to love one another by welcoming and caring for each other through our worship, missions, and outreach to our community and to the planet. We believe that prayer that motivates action is essential to creating positive changes that uplift and honor all of God's people and creation. Stewardship is the word used when we refer to someone who takes care of something that is not their own. And this summer at FCC, we will be exploring how we are tasked by God to be good stewards to the people and the planet that God created through exploration in traditional worship and in a type of summer Bible study that is designed for all ages called Good Stewards. Now what this means is that we will not be broadcasting a live service every Sunday, but instead alternating weeks between traditional worship and our summer Bible study. If you are able, we welcome you to join us in person at FCC at 10 a.m. on the days we will not be doing the live stream so you can participate with us in this exciting intergenerational Bible study where we're going to fuse fellowship friendship, discussion, and activity so that all ages can learn more about becoming good stewards together. The summer schedule is posted below this video, so you can check in on when we'll be broadcasting our service online and when we'll be meeting in Plymouth Hall for our in-person activity days. If you can't join us, don't worry. We will still be creating content on Sunday mornings that will help you to worship from home by sharing recordings from our archive that will provide you with valuable sermons, songs, and prayer to meditate on and keep you connected. I look forward to worshiping with you this summer, either in line or on person. And I encourage you to contact us here at First Congregational Church to let us know how we're doing with our online services, or what you're finding valuable, and what ideas you might have that will enhance your online experience. The Holy Spirit works through all of us to help us discover our God-given talents and gifts that can help us take care of one another and our world. We hope that we're using our talents to employ the internet to good use, to welcome you to our diverse and open community. And now, let's worship.
Good morning and welcome once again to worship here at First Congregational Church in Bakersfield. I want to welcome you the way I normally welcome people when there are folk here in the building, and that is to say no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And that includes no matter where you are sitting at the moment, you are welcome here. Today we're starting something new. The last month I was talking about the Holy Spirit. And as we came to the end of that series, I asked people, basically people that I encountered in Zoom meetings, I asked if people had suggestions of what they'd like to hear me preach on. The very first one that I heard was, tell us how to live. So we are going to start today looking at scripture passages that tell us what is important in how we live. Please join me in the call to worship. How shall we worship our God? We have heard what the Lord requires of us. Leave empty talk and pride behind. We must walk the walk. Prepare to step out in faith, even into troubled waters. Only God knows where we might need to go. Don't be afraid. Jesus will guide our steps along the way, teaching us to walk humbly, to love boldly, to serve God with body, soul, mind, and strength. Let us pray for the humility and courage to follow where the Spirit leads. Micah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Please join me as I pray the way I always pray before worship, before preaching. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight this day and all days. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So when I ask the question of what would people like to hear me preach on, and the first response was how we should live, what came to mind was the verse from Micah. Do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. It is the conclusion of the passage that was read for scripture today. But to have a full understanding of it, we really need to look at it in context and look at what was going on. What was going on very simply is that there were tensions between God and God's people. When they had come into the promised land, they had entered into a covenant in which God promised to be their God and they promised to be God's people. But now things weren't quite working. And so God decides and invites them to come, rise and plead your case. Come and they will have a debate, a discussion, a conversation, whatever you want to call it. God says, come, plead your case before the mountains and the hills. And God calls the mountains, the foundations of the earth, to be witnesses to the dispute that they are having, the controversy they are having. And then God begins to speak as God contends with his people. Now, if you look at the structure, it looks like this is going to be a legal debate. And the whole structure is structured very much as a legal issue. 
But if you listen to the words, what you hear is the grief and the heartache that comes with a broken relationship. As God speaks out saying, what have I done to you? What have I done that I have wearied you? Why are you tired of me, in other words? Why are you so tired you are going away from me and leaving me? You hear in those words the ache of God over a broken relationship. And then God reminds the people, well, let me pause first and say, notice you do not see or do not hear at this point what it is that has hurt God so deeply. However, if you read the rest of the book of Micah, you get some pretty clear ideas. For Micah complains, or God complains in Micah, about the fact that there are leaders who covet the fields and the households and harass the owners of the fields and the household until they can claim that land and take it. God complains that they are driving out the women of his people from their homes and driving away the children. God talks about judges and other leaders who are taking bribes. And God says very bluntly, your people, your wealthy, are full of violence and your inhabitants speak lies. God is not at all pleased with the way people are treating each other. And so God, in their debate, in their controversy, in their argument, reminds the people of what God has done for them. Reminds the people that God delivered them from slavery in Egypt, sending with them Moses and Aaron and Miriam to guide and nurture them. God reminds them of how God saved them when the king of Moab, King Balach, went to the prophet Balaam and asked Balaam to cast a curse upon the people. And God tells them to remember all that happened from Shittim to Gilgal. Shittim was the last place the people camped before they crossed the Jordan River into the Promised Land. And in that place, they sinned greatly because many of the people who were part of the promised people decided to practice pagan rites with the women of the land. You read between the lines and it's pretty clear that what they were practicing was temple prostitution, something that God complains about and criticizes and condemns frequently in scripture. And the result was that those who had gone astray on God's orders were killed and did not get to cross into the promised land. When they went from Shittim to the river Jordan, they had to cross a mighty river. And the question again arose, how do we cross this water? And once again, just as had happened at the sea, God parted the waters and the people crossed and in the middle of the river, they piled a pile of stones as a reminder of what God had done. And then they came to Gilgal, which is the first place they camp after crossing. And there they enter into a covenant with God, agreeing to be God's people. God reminds them that all of this is what God has done for them. And why now are they running from God, moving away from God? Well, the people don't actually justify themselves. Instead, their response to God is to ask what they're supposed to do to make God happy. How do we appease God? What should we do? What is it that you want from us? Shall I come before you? bow myself before you? Shall I bring a burnt offering of a calf? 
How about great numbers of calves and barrels and barrels of olive oil? Each one of the suggestions is greater, and then they come to the greatest of all. Shall I give my firstborn child? Shall I give my firstborn child to cover the sins of my soul? And there they have gone too far. For what is being talked about is something that was practiced in that time by other religions, child sacrifice, infant sacrifice. And at the point where they make that comment, they show how little they understand of who God is and what God wants. God does not believe in, God does not want that kind of human sacrifice. And it is then, it is then that the prophet speaks and says, God's told you, O mortal, God has told you what is good. It isn't what you do necessarily in worship. It's not propitiating God. It is not appeasing God. It is doing what you do and how you live. And the prophet says, what God has told you is so simple. It is so simple. Do justice. Love mercy. Walk humbly with your God. It is so simple and it is so hard for us to do. We often misunderstand what is meant by to do justice. Too many of us think of justice as punishment for someone who has gone astray. But the understanding of mishpat which is the word for law and justice, has a greater connotation also. As I was doing reading for this sermon, I found a sermon illustration that is very good, a story that I'm using. I believe it was in South Africa, I'm not sure. But a man told a friend that he was moving into a very poor, troubled community. Why would you do that? No white person has moved into that community in years. His response was to do justice. His comment later was, in those first years, the residents all thought he was police, and the police thought he was a drug dealer, and he wondered how long he might survive. But for him, Doing justice meant coming in and helping that community get the rights that they needed. And so he brought in ministries, things that help people with education and jobs. And in the end, the community was transformed. To do justice doesn't mean punishing somebody who is wrong. To do justice means helping people to live the way God wants them to live. Love mercy, chesed. Love mercy, it can also be translated love kindness. It's again a reminder that what God wants of us is to care for the people around us to nurture them, to help them, to do whatever we can to make their lives easier and protect them and help them walk closer to God. And walk humbly with God? When I think of that and try to understand it, I think of Jesus telling the tale of two men standing in the temple praying. And one is standing saying, God, I thank you. I am not like other people, not like this other man. I have kept the commandments. I have done this. I have done that. I help the poor. I do all these good things. The second man simply comes before God and says, God, have mercy on me, a poor sinner. 
And Jesus says it is the second man whose faith is rewarded. To walk humbly with God is to know that we are all flawed human beings. None of us know everything. None of us can do everything. And there are times all of us fall and stumble and do the wrong thing. But when we walk humbly with God, we admit that. Even if we don't know where we are wrong, we recognize to God that we are wrong. And we invite God to continually be teaching us, transforming us, so we can be better. We can be the kind of people God wants us to be. To walk humbly means to let God soften our hearts, build bridges, and teach us how to love one another. So what does it mean to live in this world as God's people? Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with God. It all boils down to love our neighbors at oursel as ourselves and love God with all that we are. Amen. As we come now to the end of our service, let us remember what scripture told us, that God tells us that what is good for us is to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore.